ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ వెల్కమ్ టు ది నేషనల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ ఆన్ రీ ఇన్వెంటింగ్ ఎక్సలెన్స్ ఇన్ లైబ్రేరియన్షిప్ వెబినార్ యాజ్ యు నో ది కాన్ఫరెన్స్ వాజ్ ఇనాగ్రేటెడ్ ఎస్ టడే అండ్ టుడే ఈస్ డే టూ ఆఫ్ ది కాన్ఫరెన్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ టూ సెషన్స్ బిగినింగ్ అట్ టూ థర్టీ అండ్ ఫోర్ పిఎం టూ ఫోర్ థర్టీ పిఎం ఎమ్ సారీ టుడే వీ హ్యావ్ టూ మోర్ సెషన్స్ లైక్ దిస్ టుమారో అండ్ డే ఆఫ్టర్ టుమారో so please make it a point to participate without fail i have been asked to start this uh, session with a very general briefing and then follows six interesting and very specific presentations by experts and practitioners of the field we have dr m sai baba from nias fellow at nias bangalore we have dr nabi hasan from iit delhi we have dr umesh reddy from iser pune we have dr bojaraju gunjal from nit Yeah, NIT Roorkela, sorry. Then Dr. Rashmi Kumbar from the teaching side. She is from the Department of uh, School of Library and Information Science from Gujarat Central University. And we also have Ms. Matty PC from Gram Panchayat Library in Kerala. She is talking about that. And she is from Rajagiri College of Social Sciences in Kochi. So we have six more uh, uh, presenters waiting. So let us not waste time. So I will just go on with my general briefing on the subject. So this is going to be my... Uh, topic i have just said you know so as basically i call myself as a practitioner so i'll only want to give uh, and introduce you to the subject with some practical insights and this is not a research paper but sharing of exper- experiences and adding some few insights from my side uh, this is going to be the agenda okay we'll talk about excellence from the library context then we'll have a, a briefing on the optimization and consolidation let us also look at uh, Uh, how robust processes and documentation helps then uh, very important evaluation and measurement then let us also have a brief discussion on roi versus voi uh, return of investments and value on investment then we look at the regular best practices benchmarks and balance scorecards then uh, very important aspect progressive people management then how do you convert uh, what is a, how do you evolve the current life is into a multi activity collaborative spaces then how do you position yourself strategically in the hierarchy instead of going to into definitions and models i have chosen a very simpler layman's uh, way of trying to understand excellence so we just go with what is excellence or why excellence you required and what is excellence so with that together uh, i think you should be able to do that because all the definition all that if you go into the net or any other literature search you get coming back why excellence see unless the constituents excel like library is a constituent of a university or academic system the parent organization cannot excel as a whole or they cannot compete with the rest of the peers or they cannot win any situation given and the, we know that we are all catering to the best of the minds so definitely we need to have a best in class library information services we need to secure the future of libraries otherwise we may vanish we means libraries may vanish in the current structure and stature and someone else may take over and this threat is always there also we require excellence to achieve excellence is to firmly position and reposition libraries in the organizational hierarchy so we librarians need to add value and prove their worth to stay relevant so now we'll go to the next one uh, what is excellence so you just i uh, want to draw your attention to this small sketch where i written the essence of excellence is keeping all stakeholders happy and excited always so this is a very simple uh, uh, definition of uh, i mean my own way of explaining things if library library can make all these stakeholders happy excited always then i think you all you have achieved the excellence in a in a different uh, sense for example take the users we need to be truly user centric most users have to be highly satisfied always so this will be known by your surveys and all the other things which will come to you later on coming to the management management should be convinced and happy to support the librarian and library team once they have that confidence in uh, library team then it becomes easy for us to get grants or to get rewards or to get promotions you name it it's on a long run it helps so management has to be there because they are the one who are providing us the funds then comes the staff library staff very important component they have to be we have to make them remain highly motivated and competitive we'll come to that little more details little later as we look into the other aspects the fourth one is the collaborators these days libraries are not in any silos and we collaborate with many different units centers initiatives and all that so we need to keep them also you know happy and they must be excited to always collaborate and have a joint efforts joint projects with the library then comes the vendors vendors is a very general term i put vendors could be our own publishers our dealers aggregators and we deal with lot of other vendors for our it equipment for a third party agreement you know all the other tools technologies 
okay all that so we have we on a day to day basis we deal with all these people so we should also derive respect from all these people so if all the four all these five segments are happy and always you know uh, look forward to work with you then i think you have reached the level of excellence coming back to the other aspect resources are aptly spent you have to be you have to see that it is aptly spent and it, you should have a intelligent mix of paid and free resources because both have advantages as well as limitations so you should look at a intelligent mix a proper mix as soon your, uh, your readers and faculty then processes are to be matured and standardized all the library processes and procedures peers should appreciate and emulate your practices and benchmarks when you go and tell the other librarians other organizations they should appreciate the kind of uh, good practices you have and they should willingly take it and acknowledge then evaluating agencies complement and reward uh, being in a university setup we need to we undergo a lot of uh, evaluations both by nac and you name it so i think library plays an important role and library can also help the other departments of the university or a college also to you know get these rewards now coming to the first point of optimization and consolidation of resources when i say resources it means information resources financial resources human capital and also infrastructure so all these four items put together forms the resources for us in this context ask before yourself before any new expenditure comes is it really needed can i postpone because there are some people who believe even postponing an expenditure is a savings raising prices and tight budgets force us to give more from less and the management is always under constant threat on us telling that you know like there is going to be cut now that the covid situation there is a cut on all the uh, departments and not to mention library then we need to closely watch the market trends talk to people and bring in innovative pricing models because normally publishers come from their end and we should approach them from our requirement so there is always a tussle but there is a long negotiation you should go and you must know what exactly your uh, university or the college or the organization requires and accordingly you should start asking the people because they come out with a fixed model or a fixed you know set of uh, Uh, databases or number of journals so you can always tell okay i don't have a medicine in my office in my college or university i don't want medicine journals why don't you take out and then give me a different model or a price and we have had success in these things so i'm just telling you one example then the other interest is normally over a period of time as the university or the academic system grows our resources get scattered so it's the duty of our team and the librarian to see that to consolidate all these resources are properly consolidated and made available within the ecosystem and you know whatever we call a discovery system when it comes to uh, information resources or it could be infrastructure because you know over a period of time the campus grows and even your resources also get scattered so it's very important that we keep an eye on that and as and when required you know we do the digitization or whatever it is and then consolidate and available at on the finger trips at one shot to the end user i an optimization this is very much required all of us do at home and then we always look for value for money for whatever you want to buy you want to see and you know the, the professors themselves will come and they themselves will uh, ask for some databases but you should look at is, is it having a value for money so just because a senior professor or the elder department asks you must always do that you know you should look at value for money and then also we should have an eye on uh, reducing if not re- i mean uh, removing the duplicates in terms of all these resources then keep the purchase policies flexible to suit the market dynamics like i said earlier then we need to revisit all the conventional practices how we work on a daily basis whether we process a book whether we issue a no noc there are a lot of procedures involved uh, you know there is always scope to automate them to be uh, think more uh, progressively and leave out the old things and then come out more you know with the digital solutions let us also you know be open to accommodate our spaces and infrastructure for user centric activities whenever such a request or requirement comes now looking at the robust processes and metrics and documentation i am sure uh, those of you who are in the middle management and senior level will definitely understand the importance of this because success of any organization is driven by its processes so you need to make these processes uh, you know very robust so that you know uh, it, it doesn't it stay for long and you know gives the desired results metrics anyway there is a lot of session going on i mean coming up in the in the next two days so we'll have to you know uh, we can uh, know more about it but uh, maintaining library metrics and its analysis will lead to informed decisions within the library team and also when you speak to the management then use mes- metrics to demonstrate it also helps us to demonstrate the uh, that library is making a difference in the students in the life of students faculty and researchers then we need to document every major activity and functions this is sometimes lacking in our libraries 
and uh, learning from the best they document every major activity it could be a copyright guidelines it could be you know how we accept a book donation from a philanthropist or from a donor or it could be a library handbook it could be a process log it could be annual report or it could be our bsc chart all these things should be properly documented and made you know presentable to all concerned then also you know normally i have seen you know a lot of things happen on a informal chat it can happen but it is also important from the perspective of a, a transparency and sharing of uh, what's happening where we should also document it in the sense suppose somebody calls us and tells okay i want this book maybe is a senior professor you do not want to ask him sir please send a mail you can send a mail confirming sir we discussed you wanted this and then mark it to your seniors or peers or something so that you know what is happening as far as possible we should avoid formal informal channels or you can make it formal by doing this way coming to uh, evaluation and measurement uh, it is required to understand the user's perception and needs for analysis action and closure of these you know activities we need to understand the impact of our resources services and activities then only you know what where where do you you know lack or where it is to be changed where it has to be stopped or increased whether it's a resource or a service or activity we should also ask ourselves are we making a difference are we contributing to the success of the parent organization this question is repeatedly asked by your seniors faculty and in the leadership team so to have a very tangible answer you have to have a evaluation and measurement and its analysis because it's a tool to provide evidence to authorities to justify our very own existence type of measurement we have operational parameters it could be hundreds of data we collect it could be a footprint it could be number of books issued it could be fine collected it could be you know data from the stock verification it could be reading out anything that i don't have to explain then user surveys at least once a year we should do a comprehensive user survey if not more frequently and also collection of informal feedback over a cup of tea or in a tea room or in a near a canteen you know you get some feedback you must come back and then share it with others so that when you want to analyze the feedback then it helps user survey is a more formal survey and it definitely helps value addition uh, this also it helps evaluation measurement helps in uh, to tell the people how we are adding value and uh, here comes the the debate on the voi and the roi it's very common and uh, as expected the management keeps asking us come and tell me i have spent 10 lakhs on this what are the returns so this is where they get, try to catch us and we should tell them it is not just the roi we should also look at the value of returns it could be on the student learning and experience because when they achieve milestones after leaving the organization you can tell them you see that boy or girl was here and you know uh, they were acknowledging our library services and whatever you know broad uh, uh, knowledge they gained that they are using now to excel elsewhere in the fields then comes to research productivity it could be on grants applying for grants you know you need to support them it could be on uh, patents applied it could be on publications there is a direct impact from the library on the research productivity so these are all the different uh, assets of value different uh, sites of uh, value which you are adding teaching impact and also you know for example when the impact is good you know the students go back and tell if you are able to support the teaching uh, fraternity with all the resources they want and the other uh, paraphilia so then the students go back and tell you know okay this is what i do this is the professor i have so even you should also increase the value of the faculty fraternity in this also the visitors you know normally whenever there is a visitor uh, the director or the vc would always take them to the campus and library is the one which definitely they want to go first so definitely the visitors the impact of the you know it has got on the admissions even the parents prospective parents of the students they come and visit the campus so these are all the different types of value which is getting added which we need to tell the management this is how it's happening and even in terms of the organization level we have accreditations getting awards and adding new features and all that so there is always a debate as i said earlier and we should be quick enough to tell the management yes let us not look at only on the returns because there are a lot of tangible intangible benefits and this is how we are adding value best practices and benchmarks i think a lot of other webinars that has been discussed it is good to encourage people to come out with a best practice you know once a year so you either uh, you know it could be a new process or a practice or a correction on the uh, existing thing or it could be an enhanced one which is not practiced so far and you should go and come out and tell you know others that this is what we did so that others who are convinced and happy they also take into their system and then acknowledge 
so it is basically best practice is to help the increase the productivity reduce cost reduce the time frame with all the desired and tangible results so we should share their best practices and also deploy let us also be more uh, open in also deploying others benchmarks and also acknowledge that's how you know the bonomi uh, continues coming to the benchmarks uh, there are a lot of benchmarks uh, mostly at the infrastructure level but there also could be benchmarks at the service level you can have your own slas and all that i'm sorry you need to uh, now set benchmarks with established professional standards and also you can also create your own benchmarks if there is not one in a particular segment you can create a benchmark and you can tell people this is what you have created and not stopping there the benchmarks you know you keep you know raising the bar okay this time you said okay i will have one librarian serving one library staff serving 20 people next time you can say one librarian will serve 25 people so that's how you can raise the bar balance scorecards uh it's time the indian academic system gets into performance based review and compensation it is true it is happening in the private sector private universities but still in the uh, predominantly in the government sector it is still not happening uh, before that let us see you know the other things like uh, it helps to translate a vision and strategy you should have a balanced scorecard whether it is financial perspective whether it's a customer service or an internal process or a learning activities so even though the organization does not want you the librarian or the seniors in the library should with the help of the juniors with taking them into confidence should develop a small bsc balance scorecard with each at least even one goal on each each of these things okay i do this much of optimization or i will get this much of uh, uh, you know uh, results in the customer survey or i will improve these processes and so i will show some optimization at the end or i will also spend so much of hours in learning so it could be very simple you don't have to go into the big structure you can start in a small way you don't have to say my library is small i am only three people still you can do that okay because this is what again like we did for benchmarks this also keeps on increasing or you can raise the bar when you go in the next time when they go for the next year then uh, it's also as i said earlier platform to track how a library is faring as a team and also as a team member as i said again this directly this bsc can be translated into individual goals so when you want to set the goals at the beginning of the academic year the balance scorecard drives this goal setting activity so it becomes very easy to set a goal to set a target and also very easy to perform to to, to measure it this helps also in uh, uh, deciding the you know remunerations and even when you want to look at promotions and all that because normally most of the uh, the government organizations will have a fixed uh, remunerations irrespective of the performance based but if you want to do this and as i said it is already happening in the private sector private universities we can also have a variable component in the reward so that those who have done well those who have achievers they can be slightly given a better compensation so that you know others also get encouraged and they also try harder we come now come to the people management or hr issues or you know behavioral issues uh, i would say among all the other discussed i think this is where lot of buy in has to happen from the library mid management as well as the library seniors i have gone through i mean i've visited a, a fair amount of a good number of libraries across in the last 30 years and i see this is where we lose this team this is where we you know uh, lose the track we need to learn new skills to be able to implement new tools and technologies because every 6 months or every year we see a new tool for any given uh, purpose so you need to have a continuously learning so that we that culture we should drive among ourselves as well as a team because what we learned in lai school a decades ago normally falls short we cannot blame the lai schools then seniors need to spend quality time in mentoring juniors they just do blindly whatever is given and send one to us they get bored so i think seniors we to you know monitor them and mentor them and ask them what is that they are looking at and you know keep them happy and you know active as a manager as a library or assistant librarian or a deputy librarian or assistant librarian we need to proactively delegate and allow them to grow see them grow in front of our eyes i'm sorry to make this statement i don't see this much happening in the current scenario we try to keep everything with us the information is asset our information is power we don't we want to do that we need to proactively go and give them give them a chance to use that give them access to that whatever uh, modules you have or even the decision making process and then only you can grow and then only you can set up a system 
you know in fact we should always have a team a team b second level you should have somebody a group of people already who can take over or who can handle the job in your absence and even the third level which is coming up also we need to create a competitive environment for assured delivery and results because among the team if there are three of team members you should bring them a competitive you know spirit in them so that you know they work harder and definitely this is what brings the best in them then ensure diversity and inclusion in your staff pattern it is also required as one of the nac uh, uh, parameter says even in the library especially the larger libraries we should look at adding people from different sectors different regions of the country and even the uh, gender issue even it should also you know look into that so then you know it becomes uh, you know a very inclusive library so it helps the people who are you know assessing us you know take a better decision take uh, give a good marks okay then succession planning is one uh, i keep telling even with my other professional friends we build a very good organization but we fail to do succession planning we have to identify one or two people who can take over from you especially at the end of your career suppose you have got another 2 3 4 years to retire i think we should with the consultation with the management with the vice chancellor you should project some people okay who have the capability to take care and we should also try to involve them in all the major decision act activities which you are doing so that means you know they are not exposed to the new environment all of a sudden they are already prepared they know what is to be done then coming to the next one we should always try to make this librarian's job they say it's a normally they we can you know sometimes jokingly say it's a dumb job it used to be a dumb job but thanks to all these tools and technologies and other uh, management tools it is becoming very interesting so we should motivate them and also we should make our team members get enough networking and learning opportunities because whatever we tell them in the classroom or in the library it will not have much impact as compared to their visiting you know other libraries or talking to people or attending conferences and then share the best practices and all that then comes the uh, last point to be strategically position the library so this is where uh, most library heads fail and uh, the people the team suffers the department suffers and the team which comes next also suffers we should take all you know necessary pains and efforts to impress all the concerned that library and information services is a professional activity because i have seen sometimes it is also libraries are considered as a parking slot for the management suppose you know there is a somebody who is has to be accommodated somewhere they call the librarian and tell okay keep him for some time i think this is where we should show the courage and conviction and tell sir madam no no we cannot do this this is a professional activity he, he, the candidate you are referring is not professionally qualified and does not match with the services and all that we should have that guts to tell at least i have been doing in the last few decades and we should tell then only they realize oh okay they are also keen once you are you sublime you be you submit to them then you know it becomes as i said parking lot of all the unwanted people then we need to build confidence and influence the faculty in image because by your own efforts the way you talk the way you have understood the universities you know the requirements and what the departments do what is the kind of research we have what are the projects which are doing we should have a very thorough knowledge on what's the university or the academic setup is doing and you should equally contribute and discuss that in the leadership meets and all that so that you know they get enough confidence that this librarian or his team or her team is quite competent and they are also knowledgeable about what they are expected to do so this kind of environment we need to build and also we need to be seek a respectable position in the hierarchy it could be you know an addition in the leadership team of the university or it could be any other projects or even for that matter even your position in the library web page it may look little stupid but it's true it should come under the academics not under the campus i mean when you to ministry the tabs in that top. so you know library normally sometimes some people give on the on the front page and the landing page itself otherwise it goes you know it into some other things so i'm just giving one example which has happened in a university so you must always see that no 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 this has to be a big library is such a place we call it's a lungs of the campus we say it's a heart of the campus it's a brain of the campus then it should be seen and easily accessible so like this so this is where there are hundreds of points data points i mean hundreds of occasions where in a, in the life of the librarian librarian should impress upon the management and keep the librarianship flag you know fly high and also demand fair you know share of rewards recognitions library team it could be even taking your library team to a picnic or asking for uh, uh, some apparels or asking for some benefits you must be the first and you should argue and you should get that done and also we should have our own internal marketing and publicity so that you know you are positioning the library in a very competitive you know place where people cannot forget they cannot ignore so here the leadership skills are at play and as i said earlier your courage and conviction also is on test so here comes the last point where you know a lot of discussions have been happening even the earlier webinars i've been talking about the collaborative spaces let me quote lorcan dempsey who is from the 
OCLC. He was a chief strategist there. Uh, let me read his uh, quote. I, I read. Our traditional model was one in which we thought of the user in the li life of the library. But now we are increasingly thinking about the library in the life of the user. It, 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 he actually puts it. And you know we should know though what the user is wanting, and accordingly we'll change the library. It is not that the library is already set; let the user come and take whatever he or she wants. Because student expectations are very fast changing, all of you are aware. And please note they are not dependent on libraries alone as the only source of info. Because the trend is for collaborative learning, and anywhere, anytime they have access to resources, so they just want to access the resources wherever they are sitting. It could be in garden, under the tree, in their uh, rooms, in the student commons, anywhere. So their uh, requirement physically to get into the library is you know decreasing and also because of this institutions also are to redesign the library spaces to facilitate more and more face to face interactions so this is where your play comes in and you need to explain this to the the management we need to create flexible furniture not necessarily everything is fixed flexible movable then we need to have collapsible walls suppose you know you have a big hall there could be two three collapsible walls and you can create two different spaces and in each of the spaces different activities can happen and also convertible space. Even the space itself, you know, if you remove the tables and chairs, it should become a small movie screening place. I'm just giving an example. So whether you are planning for a new library or whether you are also in the job of, uh, you know, renovating the library, keep all these things, and we should openly and you know positively we should do these things. We need to transform these libraries into multi-purpose multi spaces to make them interesting and inviting. And the local, I mean, the the recent demands are to create digital media rooms, design studios media productions, virtual meeting spaces, music rooms, Toastmaster clubs, and the list is endless. I'm sure you would have got such requests. Earlier, we used to laugh at that request because, for example, Toastmaster is the one which used to, I was always trying to avoid uh, when in my previous organization. No, it is the order of the day because they say Saturday, Sunday, library is closed and there is a hall, there is a chair table. So we want to learn music or they want to debate on some subject. I said, okay, fine. So we changed. So these are the things which are changing the way library is perceived. And we also should facilitate this. We need to enable various learning and co-curricular activities in the library. Lastly, I have just showing you, this is uh, T20. You know, T20, how it evolved. And people want now only in the cricket fans, only what T20 and the Friday match and the the test, day, test matches and the one day airs are you know, losing the sheen. So people wanted it. People liked it. So now this is only growing. And IPL is a classic example. Coming to the next example is about our uh, Netflix and Amazon uh, Prime and uh, you, know, you name it. So compared to the conventional cable TVs and the both the television as well as the theater movies, now it is the, taken over by these over the top OTT content. The beauty is there is no intermediary. It refers to library also because a lot of library surveys have shown that most of the users do not want any intermediaries. They just want to, librarians to facilitate the access and leave it to them and they'll do the search. Here, there are no advertisements in the OTT and people like it and they can stop anywhere they want and you know there is no disturbance. So these are the trends. Now coming to one more very good example is this Cholutica Bridge. It is in the country of Honduras in a South American country. You can see the bridge before and the, the bridge later because the world is changing in ways we have never imagined. We need to have the ability to adopt to change. This Cholutica Bridge, it's a metaphor because uh, what can happen to the conventional library system? We need to transition from build to last and build to adapt. Coming back to this bridge, what happened was this bridge was used, but because of the hurricane, both the linking roads from both the sides got destroyed. Not just that, over a period of time, even the river changed its course. You can see what will happen. The bridge is lying there and river is flowing elsewhere and people cannot cross the river. The same thing happens. We have beautiful campuses, we have mansions, library mansions, but if the library does not reflect, does not respond to users changing needs, then I think this example you know, stands correctly. Let me uh, stop here and thank you for listening. And now we'll go with the rest of the plenary lectures. Thank you.